Hey everyone, I'm Dato Dad, and today I'm going to show you the most efficient way to organize your garage or storage room with my floating bin storage rack. And best of all, I'll show you how to get free plans to design your own to fit your space. Let's check it out. Now I first realized I was onto something when I posted this photo to Reddit a couple of months ago and it instantly became the top post of all time within 48 hours on two different subreddits. People were flooding my inbox asking for plans in a how-to video. Why? Well, if you're like me, you probably have a lot of mismatched bins and storage racks, but the problem is they're not designed to work together and so you end up wasting a lot of space. Now, there are a lot of really good videos out there that show you how to make your own storage shelves with 2x4 frames and plywood surfaces. They're a lot more space efficient than off-the-shelf products. See what I did there? But where I live, plywood is really expensive right now. And over time, if you have a plywood surface and you're rubbing heavy items on top of them, they'll get scratched and chipped and just generally worn out. So I thought to myself, what if I could design a storage system that doesn't need any shelves at all? And what if that system could be scaled to meet any storage space from a tiny little closet to an entire wall? So here's how it works. First, you need to decide which type of bins you want to use. I like these really heavy duty bins from my local home improvement store. I'll leave a link to them down in the description. But it's really important to, to pick a bin with a really large lip on the side that's reinforced underneath because the entire weight of all the contents inside the bin rests on these little rails and that's only supported by the lip of the bin. So you can't use a flimsy clear plastic bin. Maybe you can see things in it better, but they're just not going to hold up to this type of storage solution. Now you need three important measurements when designing your rack. The first one is the widest width of the bin, which is typically on the lids. So you get a tape measure and I find that mine are 19 and 3 quarters inches wide. The second measurement is the width of the bin that will sit between the rails. Uh, this one's a little harder to measure since a lot of these are rounded, but do your best to figure it out. And mine looks like it is right on 17 inches. So with those first two dimensions, you can start to design your rack. We note the verticals have to be at least 19 inches apart, but not so far apart that the bins are going to fall down. And likewise, we know the distance between the inner faces of these rails have to be at least 17 inches apart. But again, not so far apart that the bins fall between the rails. So for this size bin, the optimal spacing between your verticals is 20 and a half inches with an inch and a half rail on either side. Next, you want to know the height of your bins and be sure to measure them with the lid on. My bins are 15 and a half inches tall. So I need at least 15 and a half inches between each set of rails, leaving a little extra room for the bins to slide over the top of each other. Now for construction, I like to use two and three quarter inch T25 Torx head screws. If you're gonna do any type of construction work, I highly recommend a 90 degree angle clamp, specifically made to hold two by fours at a perfect 90 degree angle. I'll link to one below in the description. If not, Speed Square works just as well. Let's tighten these down. Now when you're mounting your rails to your vertical supports, be sure to stagger your screws because you're screwing in both sides of the 2x4 and you don't want them to hit in the middle. And I like to use a speed square to make sure that my rails are perfectly level. I'll link to my favorite one down in the description. Let's not forget about safety. This thing is really sturdily built, but Dado Dad wouldn't want his kids climbing anywhere near this thing, especially when bins are being pulled out and can be used as steps. Since this rack has no cross bracing, there's nothing to keep it from tipping side to side unless you actually mount it to the studs inside your wall. Check your local building codes to see the appropriate way to do so in your area. Again, you're putting a lot of heavy weight in a lot of bins and you do not want this thing falling over. Now if you want to build a rack like this yourself, go ahead and like this video, subscribe to the channel, and ring that little bell, and I'll send you a free set of plans over at datodad.com. <laughs> show you the most efficient way to organize your garage or storage room with and best of all I'll show you <laughs>